everyone. Hi, it's Jaff here from Medieval Mirage. Welcome. I'm here today to show you how to make your own grunge brushes from scratch. That's right, from absolute scratch. Um, it's basically using coffee stained or coffee dyed paper as an, you can make them into overlays. That's what I'll show you today. But also how to make your own digital uh, grunge brushes and what I mean by that is as you can see here let's get my little thing to work a little bit better sorry my cursor um, see all these bits here I'm going to be showing you how to create this grunged effect now please bear with me because what I'm doing is I'm actually going to be um, joining two videos together and I've pre-recorded the um, these both these videos I'm now recording them again to combine them on my computer screen so I did this video ages and ages and ages ago um, but I didn't know how to put it together so rather than doing it as a part one and part two which I may be mentioning in some of these videos I'm I'm conglomerating them back to back so what I'm going to do now is I will come back to show you this but there's a two-step process the first step is showing you how to make your grunge brushes your very own from scratch right from the beginning so I'm going to pull up that video now and bear with me because I'm going to kind of um, get it to the point where it's relevant um, rather than me chit-chatting away so I'm going to open that up, here we go, Hello. and um, I'm just seeking now where the actual um, start is, and we will get onto it. So thank you for bearing with me, and here we go. I hope you enjoy this video, if you do, please let me know. And if you're new here and you want to see more of these type of tutorials, please subscribe because you'll be alerted to that uh, when it's uploaded. Um, so for all, everyone, keep your notification bell on so that you can see when these tutorials will be available for you. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoy this and please take care. So I want to show you how to make um, grunge brushes. And the reason why this is so different to this is that it will just make it really easy to extract our images from these two to make our grunge brushes. Uh, br <laughs> there we go, I'm tongue tied as well. Brushes. So um, having a contrast is going to make it easier for you to do that. So for any of you that are new to Photoshop, or Photoshop Elements or GIMP or any other um, editing software and you would like to make some groovy interesting brushes uh, this tutorial is for you and what I will do is in my playlist and in the description box below if I remember I will definitely have the part two hey everyone I'm just pausing this to let you know that um, what I just said with the description box and, and such um, I have actually put this video um, in front of the one that I'll be demonstrating to you in Photoshop how to actually make your grunge brushes so uh, what I just said just don't worry about what I just said <laughs> okay I'll keep playing because this is part one and part two so this is part one and the part two, we're going to go onto my computer and we're going to do how, we're, I'm going to walk through it with you on how to make your brun uh, grunge brushes from this. Now obviously we're going to need to either photograph or scan our images. So um, let's put that out of the way. So make sure that there's no sh shadow so you don't want anything like that on there you want it to be um, a clear picture uh, because when you scan 
uh, well, when you photograph, you've got to be careful, but when we scan these, make sure they're at 300 resolution when you scan them. Um, yeah, so once you've scanned them, save them, because uh, we're going to be using our uh, what we create. Now let me show you what I mean by creating, um, how to do that. I'll just get my my tools of the trade up here and I just need some paper. Sorry guys. Alright, so how we go about our um, creating the type of paper we want. This is going to be personal preference but I've just got a little cap here and I've just dipped it into my coffee and I'm just creating some shapes. So you do whatever you like, whatever um, captures your interest and your fancy. Um, so I'm just giving you some ideas, that's all. Now I'm also going to get my fingers in here, so I'm going to just dip them and just to create something a little bit, you know. So there you go, you've got your contrast um, there and so if you wanted something like this you could scan something like that or we could just do something like this, I don't know, just some grungy shapes that you like. It really is a matter of your own personal preference. So maybe you would like something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just just having a bit of a play there. So all you would then do is scan it. And when we join up together next time on my YouTube channel, and I hope to do that upload soon of that one, of how we do our grunge brushes, um, then we'll be able to make something out of it. So once again, I think the one that I'm going to choose is this one um, for my grunge brush. And so, and if it's not that one, it'll be this one. Um, or I might even do both. We'll see how we go with time because I've only got 10 minutes on my camera, I'm afraid. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you so much for your visit. I hope I made sense today. I'm just a little bit, yeah. I don't know, I might be coming down with something. But anyway, do take care. Hope you have a great day and see you in my next tutorial. Hello everyone, it's Ja from Medieval Mirage here. Welcome. Okay, so I'm here to demonstrate to you how we can make grunge brushes from our scanned or photographed um, images of um, coffee staining. Uh, in the link below or in my playlist you'll find that um, I did a tutorial with you uh, in creating a grunge coffee staining on paper and um, and I recommended that you either scanned or photographed it because with it I would be showing you on my in my editing software how to create a grunge brush. Now I'm just going to switch in a moment to the image that I had before. Now this is the um, the my scanned image that I've chosen to create my grunge brush. So while I'm chatting away, do bring your um, image into your um, arena. <laughs> I don't know what to call that, that spot there, but anyway. Okay, so this image here is one of my designs. It's in my Etsy store if you're interested. It's, um, uh, it's a collection of images for an A6 um, daily planner, weekly planner I should say. Uh, it's vintage style. Um, it comes like this. So this is the image. It's called Tapestry of Time. Um, there's quite a lot of images that are very similar. Um, so if you're interested, please check it out. It's in the link below. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what I just 
did then was wanted to show you the effects of the grunge brush that I was playing around with. Um, once you've created it, you can do all sorts of exciting things with it. The colors, the works. Um, also, we're going to look at how to make overlays, and this is just overlays that you can see now being clicked on and off. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to duplicate this because I want something that is completely clean. Sometimes just watching people do their work, um, you can learn a lot more than what I actually say, but anyway. Alright, so uh, you've got your scanned or photographed image in your software editing program and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and I'm going for A4 size it's what I normally work with you can choose from US paper to scrapbooking sizes um, photo paper sizes whatever you prefer so I'm going to go with the one that I want which is A4 and there we go. Okay, now what's really interesting I found is I know that the brushes only go up to 2,500 pixels, but doing it this way I found I can actually go even larger. So um, you'll see in a moment what I mean. Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my photo bin and I'm going to click onto this scanned image with my cursor mouse and I'm going to now drop it over my uh, new file and I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to just basically spread it out to um, make sure it kind of um, looks a lot, a lot more tidier than it did before. And commit. And now I'm just going to flatten this image by going to layer, right down the bottom, flatten. Alright, now this is where you can decide how you know dark you want it as an overlay, dark, light, however you like it play around with your taste and you can even do the colors so you might prefer that as your color <laughs> I mean it, it's totally up to you um, I'm going to go more for the that kind of color and then do this a little bit like so okay so now this if we once again want to flatten we can <clears throat> so this now, if I get my um, image up, if I throw this onto this um, image, this now can become our overlay. So if you do screen, well, you can't really see much of it. Soft light, not bad. But what I like to do is overlay, uh, I mean multiply it, my apologies. Now obviously it's quite dark, but you can see already we're getting that grunge effect. So I'm going to just click onto my mask, I'm just getting a soft round brush, and I'm just cleaning it up where I don't want the grunge to be. And there you go. So I'm just going to create a clipping mask and that is just around my, my image there. Alright, so there you go. There's your grunge overlay. If you duplicate it, it's even more grungier. So that's just one way you can use your scanned images. Alright, let's do something else.
let's create our brush so here we are I'm really happy with what I've done here I'm now going to once again use my hue and saturation and I'm going to completely desaturate it my next point of um, interest is to create more contrast so I'm going to use my levels and I'm going to go to that now I'm going to flatten this again and now I'm going to go into edit define brush I'll click onto that and I'm going to call it grunge brush okay so now when I go over to my image and I create a new layer I've chosen brown look how massive this brush is now obviously if I go like that it's not bad but create a new one how we reduce our size is if we click onto our brush icon there you can reduce it here or you can use your keyboard keys which is the bracket key and the left one reduces it and the right one increases the size so I'm choosing one that fits within the picture and I'm just going to click onto it I'm going to also just spread it out a little bit to help my picture a little bit better alright now obviously this isn't going to work <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to do our mask and by the way your brush will just be your new brush will just be at the bottom there so I'm just going to go straight for my soft brush and I'm now going to clean up what I don't want okay. so there you go there's your grunge brush and what else you can do you might want to choose another colour so let's go more for a shabby chic effect let's see let's more of a shabby colour and then we're going to so we've just done that I hope that I'm probably not explaining that properly and what we're going to do is we're just going to press multiply our um, blending options and we've got our different colors there um, so we click on to it like so so there you go there's your grunge brush um, you might want it deeper um, by just duplicating it you've already made it quite grungy and then um, you can just remember your clipping mask is just there and that means you can play around with different color hues to create the effect that you like so I hope that's been helpful um, if you really found this helpful please do consider subscribing because I'm um, attempting to make more of these tutorials as soon as they come up you'll be alerted to them anyway I really do appreciate your company um, thanks for visiting and I'll see you in my next tutorial have a nice day thank you bye